Hello everyone and welcome back. In order to implement here our course resolver using the store, we are going to need a selector for querying the store. We want to query the store and see does the course with this given ID, the course ID, does this course already exist in the store? If it already exists in the store, we are going to return it immediately, otherwise we are going to dispatch the course requested action. So in order to query the store, we are going to need, as usual, a selector. Let's go ahead and create here a new file that we are going to call course.selectors.ts. And this is going to contain our first couple of NGRX entity selectors. As usual, the first thing that we are going to do is to define a feature state for the courses state. So we are going to define here a feature selector, select courses state, that we are going to create using the create feature selector utility function from NGRX store. This feature selector is going to return the complete courses state, meaning the entities and the array of IDs that preserves the courses order. So we are going to return here the courses state interface that we have just defined in the previous lesson. And we need to specify here the property under which we are going to find this state in the NGRX dev tools. So this is going to be under the courses property. Now with this feature selector in place, we are ready to define our first selector. As we have mentioned, we need to find here a course by ID. So let's simply call the selector select course by ID. This means that this is a selector with a parameter. So we cannot define it directly by calling create selector. Instead, we are going to define a function that is going to take an identifier of a course. So course ID and this function is going to then return us a selector. So let's go ahead and call create selector here. We are going to be defining here what this selector is exactly returning. So the first thing that we need to pass in here is a list of selectors that we want to apply and the last argument that we need to pass to create selector is going to be the projector function. This projector function is going to take the courses state selected by the feature selector. So this is the complete courses state containing both the entities and the identifiers of this course entity. So we can see that we also have here the IDs array. So we are going to take the complete courses state. We are going to go ahead and look inside the dictionary. We are going to go to the entities property and there we are going to go ahead and look for the entity with this course ID. So this selector is going to return one of two things. We are going to return undefined if the course with a given ID is not present in the store or we are going to return the course itself if the course is already there. And with this we have defined our first NGRX entity selector. This is just a standard selector, we are simply using it to query an NGRX entity. We are accessing the entities array to see if an entity is present or not. We now have everything that we need to implement the new version of our course resolver. So we are no longer going to do a call here each time that we do a route navigation. Instead, the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to query the store to see if the course with this ID is already there. So in order to query the store, we need, as usual, a selector. Let's then apply the selector using the NGRX select operator and we're going to pass in here the select course by ID function that we have just defined and to this function we are going to pass in course ID. So this function is going to return us a selector that we are then applying here using the select RxJS operator. The result of this call is going to be an observable that it's either going to return us a course if the course is present or undefined. So this is an observable of course and if we return it here we are going to see that we have fixed all compilation errors. Let's now handle the case when the course is not present in the store. So for that we are going to be using here the tap operator. 
So what happens if the course is not present in the store? If that's the case, then we are going to need to dispatch here the course requested action. Let's go ahead and do that. So if the course is not present on the store, meaning that the course variable here is undefined, if that's the case, we're going to go ahead and dispatch this new course requested action. This action is then going to contain the course ID property. So as usual, we are not sending a command to the store saying what it should do. Instead, we are reporting an event that has happened somewhere in the application. In this case, we noticed that a course was requested and we have notified the store of that event. And with this, the implementation of this course resolver is practically completed. We are only missing here a couple of small details. The first is what happens if the course is not yet available in the store. If that's the case, we don't want the router transition to go through. So we want to filter out this undefined value that we are getting here. We don't want to send that to the router. Let's then use the RxJS filter operator and filter out the cases when the course is not yet available in the store. Another thing that we need to make sure is that this observable terminates. Only when this observable gets completed will the router transition be considered completed. So we need to make sure that whenever we emit our first course, we are going to call here the first operator in order to make sure that our router transition completes. If we don't add here the first operator, then the router transition is never going to complete and we are going to remain in the source route. We will never reach the target route. And with this, we have finished the implementation of our resolver. We have detected that this course was needed in the store and we have informed the store of that request. The store is then going to decide what to do with this request. In this case, we are going to be sending a call to our backend using an NGRX effect. 